In this video, we're going to use photographs um, to copy the shape of a stone exactly. So I've got the photographs that have been emailed to me. So the first thing that I'll do is select that email in Outlook and then come up here and choose the import attachments from Outlook button. And that will import the photos that had been emailed to me. There are three of them, so I will just move these over. These two are actually the same, so we'll delete that one. And then we've got these two to work from. So we'll do one at a time and, and see what, uh, what we can do here. The first thing that I'll do is I'll actually run Shape Builder. And using Shape Builder, I will create the shape, the size that we have measured things. So we're not going to do a base. The length is 54 inches exactly. The height is 20.125 or 20 and an eighth. The drop on the right is two inches because it is 18 and an eighth from here to there. And then on the other side, it is 1.875. So that should actually be the exact size, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna straighten up and resize the photograph to make sure that it matches up in the SERP matches up to the way that they actually created the SERP. Because if you look at the photo, it actually looks a little bit more exaggerated um, along the hump here, as opposed to how the shape builder builds it. So we will compare the two and see what happens. So we'll start on this one. Because the square is centered on the stone, I think it's gonna give us a more accurate result. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll just take the freehand tool and we'll go from here to here. And normally I'm going to zoom in and just make sure that my line that I created is, is going to be accurately placed on the stone there. And I'll put it over here too, just, just to make sure that it's where I want it to be. I'll shift select this and run auto size. And on auto size, I will go 54 inches. I'm going to delete the existing line and straighten along the horizontal and hit apply. And what that should then do is straighten it up along this edge. So if I grab the picture right here, because that's the bottom left hand corner of the stone, if I grab it right there and I come over and click here, it should snap to that point. And then the stone shape, I guess when I did my shape builder, I, I probably should have not told it to be filled because that way I can see through it, but I'll take the fill out. I'll just uh, left click here and I usually give it a bright, you know, either yellow or red or some sort of um, other color that I'll see a little bit better and maybe outline it just slightly so that I can see the thickness of my line a little bit as well. So you can see there that I've, I've got my yellow line and then right here, I've got that as well and coming over here. So you can see everything does not exactly match up and that's because normally when you take a photograph, is going to be uh, slightly skewed or at a little bit of an angle. It's hard to get it exact. So what we'll do is we'll take this and it's easy if we just crop. So we'll grab the crop tool and come over and crop it to about there. You double click inside of it to go ahead and create your crop. And that way, when you crop it, it's going to let you manipulate it easier. So we'll then go up to um, object and say add perspective. I guess it didn't like that it was cropped beforehand, so I'm gonna undo that. Before I add perspective, let's go ahead and go up to bitmap and say convert to bitmap. And because we're just working on screen, it doesn't have to be super high resolution. You can actually see down here, it's only 43 DPI to begin with. So if we choose 72 or 96, um, either one is gonna be fine for what we're doing. And Basically, we're just creating another bitmap at 72 DPI, and it's not gonna have any of the backend data that it had been cropped or anything like that. And so now this time, when I go up to object and say add perspective, it's not going to mess with it at all. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so that these corners match up with the corners of the yellow uh, stone that I created. So I will drag this corner here. And because we are messing with perspective, as I drag and, and mess with one side of the stone, it's going to mess with all of the other sides. And so you often have to go around and you know change this um, a few times just to fine tune everything. So we're gonna get it to about where it needs to be. And then we'll go back and make sure that everything is where we wanted it to be. 
So I'm just dragging those corners to line up with the corners of the stone that we had created. Okay, so we'll just drag this one up just slightly, a little bit higher. And as you can see, it's trying to snap there to the existing point. Um, and sometimes if you're doing really close changes on your node, it's going to try to either snap to itself or snap to something else that's really close by. As I drag this, if I hold Q on the keyboard while I do that, it's going to temporarily disable snap so that I can place that wherever I want and then I'll just let go of Q. The other option is to come up and either disable snap, you can turn it off altogether with Alt Q, or you can tell it to you know, not snap to objects or not snap to page, but it's, it's actually a lot faster if you just hold Q on the fly and that way you can not snap to some stuff. So if we look now at this stone, you can see our serp top and the stone that we've got. This is the difference that we were trying to overcome here is because their serp is a little different than the way that the shape builder builds it, right? Because the stone shape itself is exactly the size that we want it to be, 20 and an eighth, we will keep that um, where it is. We're not going to move that node down, but what we might do is just take our picture and stretch it just ever slightly up um, so that it matches up with the top of the stone there. And again, these these edges, I mean, the, the more accurate you are, then the closer it's going to match up. And if you're if your design is something that needs to follow the contour or the shape of your stone, then you really want it to match up as closely as possible. Um, so we can just take you know a little bit uh, more time to to do this and, and just make it as accurate as we can. Okay, so we've got that. The next thing is that this these two squares that we've created. Um, what we'll do is we'll just build a rectangle that's the size of those. So from here to here, it's 12 inches. So we'll make it 12 inches tall. And then left to right, it's going to be nine and a half inches. And again, I'll just right click to make this yellow and maybe make it a little bit thicker just so that we can see it a little better. And we'll put it right here. And as you can see from there to there and there to there, I mean, it's, it's not perfect, perfect, but it's pretty close, you know, maybe slightly slightly off there. Um, so again, we just want to make sure that our stone is the right length, that we that the edge here is the same length as this, and then over here that the edge is matched up. So if I scoot this over just slightly, and I'm holding control while I do that, we might see that it's just a tiny bit short there. So if we just drag on this side handle, make it a little bit longer, you know, we can adjust the width that way to make sure that that lines up. And that should then make it so that this square is also going to line up a little bit better um, as far as the sizing goes there. It's pretty accurate there. Now, every time you take a picture, there's going to be a slight fisheye, um, usually with your lens, you know, where this um, maybe is not exactly straight. So it's not exact exact but it's it's going to be pretty close so what we'll do is we'll just take the shape that we've got and we'll click right here that'll give us access to these nodes i'm actually just going to um so what you can do is if you just hit the plus sign up here it's going to add a node halfway between the existing nodes and you can do the same thing over on this side if you if, if we grab that and, and click this plus sign it's it's going to add a node halfway between we don't really need that one the reason I'm doing that is so that I don't really mess with this one, right? I'm just going to pull this one down a little bit and readjust this and readjust this just to get it to fit that picture. Do the same thing here. I'm just pulling it down and then I'll pull it that way and that way. And I'll just bend this a little bit more that way. Now these nodes are going to, when you build a node, um, it's going to be a smooth node. I usually cusp them just so that I can be a little bit more accurate on bending this way. And we'll pull that up. 
So that match is pretty close. Obviously the test would be to cut our stencil and see how close it matches to our stone, but that's as close as I'm gonna be able to get it based off of this photograph. So we can do the same thing with this one over here if we wanted to take the time to do it. I'm actually not going to take the time to do it because the square is in the corner. I don't think we'd have as accurate um, of, of a photo. Plus, if we look at this photo, you can see the bottom of the stone, which means that we are a little bit under the stone itself. Um, so comparing the two pictures to each other, I think this one over here was actually a more accurate photo, more straight on. And so that's the one that I used. Again, we can try it with this one if we wanted to, to see how close we could get it, but um, for the sake of this video, I'm not going to try that just because I, I don't think it's going to be as accurate using this one. So that's what I would do um, in order to size a shape or to get a shape to match a stone exactly. And we knew these measurements um, because we took those measurements on the stone. That's how we knew that it was 54 inches wide and 20 and an eighth inch tall. And, then we took measurements over here on the edges. Um, so that's how we knew all those measurements in order to use the shape builder. Hopefully that's helpful in uh, getting you to be able to match a shape based off of a photograph. If you really can't get it completely accurate, if you can't get your photo straight enough or whatever the case may be, the other option is to use large paper um, and actually go over and take a rub of the edges of the stone and take that to um, one of your local print shops that would have a large format scanner and have them scan in the paper that you used because that way it'll come in full size and it would not be skewed at all. Um, but that obviously takes a little bit more time and uh, maybe cost as well if you had to pay somebody to scan for you. So that is how I would take a picture and straighten it out uh, using real life measurements that we're able to use.